don't have the, like if you're not able to open the starter code, what you're gonna do is op create a new, ex uh, a new Swift project. So then you should have something like this, right? And it should be like mostly empty. Um, is anyone not at this step? Yeah, mm -hmm. like if you can't open the file, do this. Uh, oh, if you can't click the buttons, that's fine. Um, is anyone else not at this step right now? Uh, yes. Okay, I'm going to assume that everyone else is at this step or their code works. So what you're gonna do is you're going to go to where you downloaded the starter code and you're gonna open these files. So you should be able to open them and it should show up like this, right? So right now I just open present view controller and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna copy this and I'm gonna create a new file called a new Coco touch class and you're gonna call it present view controller and you're just gonna paste it in. Did anyone not get that? You're going to, so what you're gonna do is in the downloaded files, you see how you had this, but you couldn't open that. So we're, we're gonna manually recreate all of those files in the starter code. So you're gonna click here and the four files that you wanna duplicate are the last four. So present view controller, push view controller, scene delegate, and view controller. Just drag them in. Oh, can you just drag them in? Oh. Um, you might be able also to just drag them in actually. So let me just delete this. And then I'm just gonna drag these files in from the folder that I downloaded. And this is my new um, Xcode project that I just created. So I'm just gonna drag them in and click. Make sure it says copy items if needed, um, create groups and like these three are all checked. And then click finish and you should have all the files here. You might have a duplicate scene delegate, but you'll notice one of them has to do and the other one doesn't. You're gonna delete the one that doesn't have to do. Oh, does anyone need help at this point? Um, please raise your hand. Oh yeah. Oh sorry. Yeah, so you're gonna after you have dragged in all the files, so now like your file your new Swift project looks mostly like the one that's downloaded. Um, you're gonna like do all the initial setup stuff. So delete main.storyboard, which is just main here. Um, you might have main.storyboard or if you have the most recent version of Xcode, it'll just say main, um, it's completely fine. So you just move to trash. And then in your info.plist, remember to expand this property and you're going to delete the last item. And if your Xcode looks like this, where it says launch screen and it doesn't say launch screen.storyboard and like the icons kind of look like this, what you're gonna also have to do is go to L3 starter. And if you see this part says main interface, what you're gonna wanna do is change this to launch screen.storyboard.
Okay, uh, at this point, uh, please raise your hand if yours doesn't work still. Um, because with the new version of Xcode, like there's this other thing that you have to do, but like because you deleted me, that's why it's like, like it's looking for me, not showing me. Oh, so it's just I don't know. I don't know what's exactly. All right, since it's uh, 7.44 now, I'm going to get started on lecture. Um, if your Xcode still doesn't work after this, uh, please come up after class and we'll help you fix it. And then um, we'll also post the finished demo and also the recorded lecture afterwards, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, so welcome back to lecture three of Intro to iOS. Um, today we'll be talking about navigation, MVC, and delegation. So before we go into that, I want to talk about um, this resource uh, called um, WTF Auto Layout. So if you've noticed in the previous assignment, sometimes when you did constraints, um, you would get this constraint error, and it would like print on your console like this. If you don't know what it means, um, you can go to www.wtfautolayout.com, and you can paste that in, and it'll like visually show you what you're doing with your constraints and like basically help you fix it. So it's a really nice uh, resource if you don't really understand what's going on with your constraint errors. And then also, um, in last week's lecture, Haying introduced programmatic auto layout for using constraints. Um, but there's other ways to set up UI for iOS. The first one is frame-based. So frame-based is when you use um, like a view, a UI view, to specify the width, height, x, and y of a view. And then um, this is how you would basically like add it to the view and like use it. There's also SwiftUI, which um, many of you, if you tried to create a file, like you noticed that like it looked a little weird. It didn't look like everyone else's because you probably created a SwiftUI project instead of a UI kit project, which is what we use in this course. So um, SwiftUI is a different way of like creating iOS apps. And when you use SwiftUI, it's like elements are positioned relative to each other, like with stacks, groups, uh, lists, or alignments. Um, if you have experience with React.js, it's basically kind of like that. We also have storyboards where you can like manually drag everything that you want onto the view, and you can set the constraints, but like with um, UI instead of like with code. So those are three ways to um, do you uh, set up UI for iOS. But in this course, um, we focus on using programmatic auto layout because it's just much more uh, easily maintained by multiple people. So before going into today's lecture, I just wanted to give some announcements. So extensions have to be requested 24 hours in advance with the exception of extenuating circumstances, and we always have the right to deny you an extension. Also, um, the new version of Xcode doesn't have main storyboard file base name in info.plist. If you noticed, um, trying to follow the textbook instructions, your info.plist was a lot shorter. So um, we've updated the textbook with some um, instructions. So if you go to the textbook now, you'll see that if I go to setting up a new Xcode project, there's this section where um, if you have the newest version of Xcode, you can either do this, so you can search for main and then um, delete main for UI kit main storyboard file base name, or you can do what I just showed you right now, and you can just click on the file and change um, main interface to launch screen.storyboard. Either of those work, and like though this is like part of the setup if you have the newest version of Xcode. And you'll be able to tell because your icons will look like this instead of like this. So that's like the easiest way to tell if you don't know. Um, but yeah, also uh, please don't email any of your um, TAs or the instructors. Uh, please instead create a campus wire post. Um, you can make it private if necessary. 
And now we're going to go into some review of last week's content. So can anyone tell me how you would center a UI view in the center of the screen? Uh, yes. Um, a is part of the answer, so A would center it around, along the X, right? But if you want it in the center of the screen, you also need the Y. So the correct answer is actually um, E. So you need to center it like along the X and along the Y. And so last week, we talked mostly about how to make single view apps. And today, we'll be going into how to create multi-view apps. So multi-view apps are most of the apps that you guys are familiar with. Like, you know, if you open an app, you usually don't just see one view. Um, like with your grocery list project, it's mostly like very interactable, interactable. So like you can go to multiple views and like, um, you know, go back or go forwards. So one way you can create multi-view apps is with the UI navigation controller. So UI navigation controller is basically like a stack kind of, um, it like manages like all the uh, view controllers that are in your view. So you can push a new view, UI view controller onto the navigation stack or pop a UI view controller off the navigation stack. Um, if you're not too familiar with stacks, you can also think of it as like an array, but vertical in that. And then also you only ever add to the end or remove from the end. So that's a good way to think about stacks if you're not too familiar. So if you look at this code, you'll see that it's instantiating a view controller. So let my view controller equals view controller. And then it's using the navigation controller to push the view controller. And then it's using uh, the navigation controller to pop it. So when you push it, it like pushes it onto the stack so you can see it. And when you pop it, it removes it. And you'll notice it says animated true. So animated true just means like if you want there to be like an animation as it transitions from like popping and pushing. So like, I guess kind of like an app, um, if you guys have used like, uh, like Twitter or something like that, you know, when you click on a tweet, you see like a more detailed view of the tweet, like that's kind of like pushing. And then when you go back, it's like popping it. Um, if that didn't make sense, like here's a video. So it's like a photo album. You notice you click screenshots and it pushed a view, then it popped it when it went back. And then it pushed the time lapse, time lapse album and then it popped it. So that's kind of a good way to visualize um, pushing and popping. And you'll notice that it does have a UI navigation controller because um, you'll see this like bar at the top, which if you didn't notice, um, your Project One app probably didn't have because um, we didn't um, add it when we set uh, the view controller in the scene delegate. So this is kind of more of a behind the scenes of what's going on. So if you look to the left, like it'll have like, it's the UI navigation controller, which has like the view controllers that it's managing in a stack. And then there's the navigation bar, which if you notice was that thing at the top, like this right here. And then um, there's also the toolbar and the delegate. So um, this is like an example app. So if you notice like the clock app on your phone, it like, it had the, uh, it has the assembled views, which are made up of like first the window, then the tab bar, which is in the bottom. Then this is like the actual navigation view with the navigation bar and then the actual custom view hierarchy. So like one of these clocks, like I don't think the actual app is clickable, but if it was like, if you tapped one of these clocks, like you could like push like, a different view on top. And then if you wanted to go back, you would just pop it. The other way to um, create a multi-view app for um, your app that you're building is with modal presentation. So modal presentation, you don't need the navigation stack. You don't need the UI navigation controller. What happens is you directly present a UI view controller on top of the previous one. So it like goes up instead of left or right. Um, the code for this is pretty similar to a navigation controller. So you first instantiate the view controller with let my view controller equals view controller. And then instead of doing pushing or popping, you're doing presenting and dismissing. So you just do present my UI view controller, um, animated true, and then dismiss with animated true. So um, this is a good way to visualize it. If you know the Ithaca Transit app, like if I click on info, then it'll present. You saw like slit from the bottom up and then I dismissed it. So it went down. Uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? Okay. So next we'll be talking about model view controller, which is a common design pattern that we'll use in this course. So if you follow like the diagram there, you'll see that like it's like the view is what you see, and then the controller is like something that handles the behind the scenes, and then the model is like where you would store your information. So in your view, like if some user like taps something or has some some kind of action, like they type, then the controller will see that and then update the model, which um, the update to the model then notifies the controller that there was an update to the data, which will update the view. So 
you can think about it in the context of the Ithaca Transit app, say like you searched for a bus stop, right? So searching, like clicking on the search bar is a user action. And when you type something like, say you type like, um, like Gates, Gates Hall, and then um, it'll update the model. So like your model will um, then use, be used to reflect all the bus stops that are close to Gates Hall. And then that, that change to the model will notify your controller, which will then update your view to just display to you the bus stops near Gates. Um, is that, does that make sense for everyone? Uh, does anyone have any questions? So yeah, this was the example that I just went through. So like the model was the bus stop objects and the view was the displayed list of all the bus stops. So then your controller listens to the user selection to update the view, which updates the list of bus stops to display. Um, and now we'll be going into delegation. So in the previous lectures, you talk, you saw like a single view app and how to pr like pass information around in a single view app. And with delegation, we are able to pass information between view controllers. So when you're pushing or popping your view controller or presenting or dismissing it, like you want to pass information back, right? Like think about it like um, when you edit your profile on like a social media app, right? When you edit it, like you change your name, then when you click done, it's updated on the other view, right? So how that's done is kind of with delegation. So delegation is like communication method and it's specified through protocols. And one, one object can delegate another object to perform an action through the protocol. And protocols are basically like interfaces in Java, which are like a, bunch, a collection of methods that allow you to um, delegate one action to another object, if that makes sense. So um, we like to use an, a restaurant analogy. So you can think about like at a restaurant, when you're ordering something, there's like a chef, a customer, and a menu, right? So the chef knows how to cook items on the menu, and the customer orders items off the menu. So the menu in this case is the protocol because it's like all the things that you want to um, order, so like, um, like a burrito or a pizza or whatever. And then the customer delegates the chef to make their food because the chef knows how to cook the menu items and the customer doesn't, right? So if you look at this code, you'll see that at the top in the blue, that's the protocol definition. So it's called menu delegates and it has one function, which is make burrito. So if this was your menu that you got at a restaurant, like you would only be able to like eat burritos or something. And then there's the chef, which conforms to the menu delegate protocol, as you can see in like the red and it implements all the functions in the protocol. So if you want um, an object, a class to conform to a protocol, it has to implement all the functions um, stated in that protocol. So in this case, it implements make burrito. So um, it just prints like making the burrito. And then the customer class will have a delegate uh, variable. And this, um, in this case, it's like the, the delegate variable is of type menu delegate. So you initialize it and then um, inside the customer class, when they're ready to order, they can just order it. And when the, in their order function, they would just do delegate dot make burrito because it, um, it will access like all the functions in the protocol, which are implemented by the chef class. And so like, basically um, what you can do is you can instantiate like an element of this chef class. So not an element, an object. So let chef equals chef, and then let customer equals customer. Um, and you assign the delegate of this customer to chef. So if you look before here, they had var delegate, menu delegate. So this delegate's um, value is the chef, which conforms to the menu delegate protocol. And then um, after that, you would be able to do customer.order burrito. Does anyone have any questions at this point? OK. So this is kind of more detail. So protocol, um, this protocol is called change color delegates. And it implements one function called did change color. So if you want your view controller to conform to this protocol, all you have to do is do extension view controller and then um, the colon and then change color delegate. And inside those braces, you would have to implement all the functions of, di of the change color delegate. And multiple view controllers can conform to the same protocol. They just all have to um, implement and define the functions themselves. So then in the other uh, view controller where you want to, um, this is where the view controller where you want this view controller to be the delegates, you would, um, so in this case, like they're trying to present this view controller called other view controller. And other view controller we assume is going to pass some data back into view controller. And so the way you do that is other view controller has a variable called delegates. And so other view controller's delegate is then assigned to self, which in this case is view controller, the current file that you're in. It's a little confusing because it's view controller and UI view controller, but in this case, 
view controller I'm referring to is the name of this specific class. And then um, you would just do present other view controller and then handle everything else. So delegates, so this is looking at other view controllers. So other view controller, we instantiate weak var delegate. So um, this delegate is then um, this delegate that we signed here to self. And um, the reason why we make it weak is something to do with like lifecycle um, with Swift. Uh, you don't really have to worry too much about that. Just know that anytime that we instantiate a delegate, it has to be a weak variable. And then um, in other view controller, it can then call did change color with the delegate function because this delegate is then this view controller, which implements um, all the functions of the, the change color delegate uh, protocol. And so before we present other view controller, we set the delegate, right? And then this method calls the did change color method in view controller, which is this file. And so does anyone have any questions at this point? Yeah. What's the weak, uh, weak variable? Um, the weak variable is a weak var delegate. Oh, is that what you were asking? So weak um, deals with like man memory management through like Swift's automatic reference count. Um, basically, like you don't want this delegate to persist across like your entire app, so you make it weak. So is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so <laughs> if you make it, like it has something to do with like memory management, like you don't really have to worry too much about the reason why. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Okay. So now we're going to get into the demo. Um, if you run the starter code, you'll see that you get this screen with still loading with two buttons. So one's called push and present. And if you tap on any of these, like nothing will happen. So what we're going to do is add action to these. Um, so the push uh, button, we're going to make it push a view controller. And then the present button, we're going to make it um, present a view controller. But before we can do any of that, we're going to have to go to scene delegates. And you'll see there's a to do here to create a navigation controller, because if you notice our app is not embedded in the navigation controller, you'll be able to tell because it would have had this like bar across the top. Oh, let me just make the text bigger. Is that good for everyone? Okay, cool. So um, you'll notice that I instantiated a like an object of this view controller, which is this file right here. So what I'm gonna wanna do is put, right now I just did window.rootViewController equals view controller. But what I want to do is put this view controller inside a UI navigation controller. And the way you do that is with, you just do equals UI navigation controller. And then you select the second option with root view controller and you just assign it to view controller, the variable that was up here. So if you run this now, You'll see that. Oh, it's not here. Oh, um, okay. It might not show because this background is also white. But if we go to um, view controller, you'll see that we have a second to do to set the title. So there's two ways to set the title. You can do navigation dot item dot title equals um, view controllers. And if you run that, that'll work. So you see, it says view controllers. Um, you probably can't really see the bar because the background is also white. But um, a nicer way, instead of doing navigation .title, navigation item title, you can just directly do title equals view controllers, and that will still work. So now we want to add function functionality to this push view controller, right? Well, if you notice, this button already has um, a OB, objc function attached to it. So we just have to implement this function, and then it'll add functionality to this button. So what we do is we have to create the view controller that we're going to push. And that view controller is already created here. So it's called push view controller. Um, I'm going to set the background to blue so that you can notice the difference. And if you go here, you just do let view controller equals push view controller. And then you can do navigation controller dot push view controller and you just assign it VC. And I'm going to set the animated to true. So if you run that. You'll see that when I click this, it'll push a view controller. And then um, what's nice about um, 
in that navigation controller is that it automatically like creates this like thing at the top for you where like you just have to press this button to go back so it's already like made for you which is kind of nice and the name that you will usually see displayed here is the name of the title of the navigation controller of the previous one yeah does anyone have any questions at this point okay so now what we're going to do is create this view controller to present. So present view controller right now, if you tap on it, nothing happens. So we already have a view controller created. It's called present view controller um, here. And so what we're going to do is do let vc equals present view controller. And then you're just going to do present vc true and nil. No. So if you run this, You'll see that when I click present, it'll like present this view at top, right? And I can like slide it down. So then, um, what I'm gonna do next is um, what we you see this? There's like this text box here. What we want is like when we like type something like new title, and I click save. This should dismiss, and also this should be updated with that title that I typed in here in this text box, right? So what I'm gonna do is go to present view controller. And then you'll see that first I have to initialize. Um, what I'm gonna do is um, first, actually, I'm going to create uh, the protocol. So if I go up here, I'm going to create this protocol. So I'm gonna call this um, protocol update title delegate class. And then I'm gonna, um, define a function here called um, update title. And so what I'm going to do is in this, when I create this view controller, present view controller, I want to set, oh, yes. Oh yeah, no worries. Um, is that good? Okay, cool. So, um, yeah. I just say like after that command like maybe a second before. Oh. Like, yeah, no worries. Thank you. Um, is everyone good with this stuff? Okay, so um, when we present this view controller, what we want to do is, um, like we set, saw in the note, um, the slides before, you want to set um, present view controller's delegate equal to this view controller, which is called view controller. So the way you're gonna do that is you go to present view controller and you're gonna have to do leak var delegate, and I'm gonna make this of type um, update title delegate. And you have to make it optional. So then I'm going to have to, um, so there's two ways you can do this. You can either do like in this view controller um, on lines after you instantiate it, you can do vc.delegate equals self. Um, that also works, but I think it's nicer if you do this instead. So what you can do is you can do um, init. So you're gonna create an initializer for this uh, present view controller class. You're gonna do delegate. Um, update update title delegate, and then you're gonna do self dot delegate equals delegate, All right? So you're instantiating this delegate, which is this one up here, to equal the one that you pass into your initializer, which is this one, and then super dot init. You're gonna have to do super dot init nil and nil. Um, you just have to do that every time you create an initializer for a class, and then after you see this, it'll yell at you. Um, you just have to like add it and that would be fine. When you're done with this step, could you give us a thumbs up? Okay. Um, so you in it, you created the init, right? And then you did self.delegate and then you did super.init. Um, after a while, you'll get this like error. Like if I delete this, um, I'll get this error. You just click on it and click fix.
that to that. Did that work? And the reason why is because there are two different ways of initializing it. So if you give it one way, I suppose like, ah, oh, you need to give me the other one. But you're like, I'm not going to use it anyway, so I'm just going to give you this template. So that's just the purpose. You know, you never, you're never going to be required to like put something substantial for now at least. So usually when they tell you what the error is, there's going to be like this auto fixing thing, and you click on it and just click on it. And it'll be fine. Yeah, so if you go back to view controller now, you'll see that you get this error at the bottom. It'll say missing argument. So you just click fix, and then you can just um, put self here. So now um, this now this uh, view controller is now you get another error, which is like this view controller is not conforming to the expected type update update title delegate. So you're gonna have to do is you do um, here on to do seven. You're gonna do extension of view controller, which is this view controller, and you're going to do update title delegates. Oh. And then you'll see that it'll yell at you again, and it'll be like, you don't conform to the functions. Um, so then you just click fix, and then it'll just add it for you. And then so what we want to do is we want to update the title with um, what's passed in. So actually, in update title, we're going to need to pass in the new string, right? So this is the new string that we got from the present view controller. And so, yeah, you just have to add this to the front. And then down here, you can just, it'll just have the new string here. So now, um, assuming that we did get this new string back, we'd want to update the title of this view controller, right? Which is the thing at the top, um, this view controllers. So we do is title equals new string. And so now if we run that, that won't, work. that won't work. But so you have to go to present view controller. First, you have to go down here and you're going to, you see that there's this function already like dismiss view controller. And this dismiss view controller function is attached to this save button in the bottom. So what you want to do is you want to call the delegate function. So you're going to do delegate. Um, and this is the delegate that you set up here, which you initialized here. And you do delegate dot update title. And this new string is going to be from this text field, right? Which is this one right here. So you're going to do text field dot text. And then you just want to dismiss it. So you're going to just do dismiss, true, and then nil. So we run that. Oh, so because this is an optional value, you can either unwrap it or you can just um, do this and provide it a default value, which I'm going to call view controllers, which is what I originally said the name of the, the navigation control controller title is going to be. So here I'm going to type like new title. And then if I click save, you'll notice that it was updated here. So now if you click present again, you'll see that like this is empty, right? It doesn't have a um, new title. Well, if you wanted to like just pass it in as like a default value, like the current title, what you would do is you have to go to view controller and um, we'll have to pass in this data from view controller to present view controller. And the way you pass it in is if you go to present view controller, you'll notice our initial initializer here. What you're going to do is you're going to add another property. So here I've already um, instantiated down here, which is called bar placeholder string. I'm actually going to move this up here. And what you're going to want to do is do placeholder text string and then you're going to do self dot placeholder text equals placeholder text and then now i have instant i have like instantiated this value of placeholder text so if i go down here um you can just do text field dot text equals placeholder text but before you do that you're going to have to go to view controller and if you like do command b you'll notice that it says here like you forgot to placeholder text so all you have to do is do navigation controller dot title and so since this is optional, I'm also going to provide a default value of view controllers. So now if you notice, it says view controllers. And when I click present, view controllers is here. And if I change it to new title and I click save, it's new title here. But if I click present again, it's also a new title. Um, so I'm passing, basically passing this title back and forth between the two view controllers. 
Uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, this is recorded. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll post the finished demo. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's it for today's lecture. Um, the last thing is just an action item. Just a reminder that Project 3 is due October 17th. It's due a little later than usual because of fall break, so we don't want you guys to have any assignments <laughs> over fall break. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, um, please come on up afterwards. But uh, besides that, like, we're done with lecture for today.